Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So I did get some requests on configuring things within the Peak Kit. So today we're going to go through a whole methodology from, you know, doing recon to grabbing badges from users in the wild to cloning those badges and gaining access to a facility using the tools on the screen. I'm going to pop to a video in a second, explain what each one of these are, and then we're going to go through the whole process of utilizing it all. So if you enjoy what you're watching, like, subscribe, and share out this video to everybody. I don't do publicity. I rely on you to do that. So I appreciate everybody who does. These are the tools that we'll be going through today. So we have our long range reader, which we'll use to target users out in the wild and grab their badges. We also have a battery pack for that. We have a flipper zero. I'm not gonna show this in this video, but I'll show it in a follow up video. And then we have a Proxmark to clone our badges, as well as a mock door reader from an old RTA class I took that'll tell us whether access was granted with a target card that the user's holding. And then we have a blank card here. The flipper will be a different use case if we were in a facility and we just needed to do something quick and dirty. All right, so we have this long distance proxmator. We're gonna flip this over. We have our SSID and we have our password. We have our power cable. We're gonna plug this sucker into the battery pack. We'll show you how to use some of these tools from Physical Exploit here. And once we do that, we can double click this guy and then set this to, I think it's uh, 12 volts, I believe. And it makes noises now and it's kind of just setting up. On the back side under here, you're going to see a light turned on. And then we'll go to the computer and we should be able to get to this SSID here with this password and we'll configure it to work with our local phone network on our mobile phone. And that's how we're going to receive those badges in real time as we're collecting them with this long distance badge reader at like a Starbucks or something. So let's hop over to our computer and do that. So open up your network here and you wanna to connect to whatever one says doppelganger with a couple of values at the end. In my case, it's 56EO. You're gonna to connect to that with the password that's on the back of your long range reader in the kit that you got. And the default password, I believe for all of them is under the radar. And this will work for you know the skimmer or both readers. So once you do that, you wanna open up a web browser and you wanna to go to 192.168.4.1 and that's gonna open up the doppelganger um, application. And we're gonna configure our Wi-Fi so that way it connects to our cell phone and we can look at our cell phone as we normally would in the real world as we're collecting badges and we'll know in real time, hey, we got a badge, we're good to go or we need to try again because we missed it. It's a good feedback loop for us. So we'll go to configure Wi-Fi. In our case, we're just gonna put PHY exploit for our demo. And then whatever password that you would wanna use on your phone's mobile hotspot. So in this case, we'll just put testing one, two, three. Make sure I type that correctly. Okay, cool. I'm gonna hit save. And then it's now saving those credentials. And it's gonna to try to connect to my phone, but I need to configure this on my phone. So I'm going to do that right now. I just created a mobile hotspot on my mobile phone with the same SSID and password that we configured in our Wi-Fi manager here. Now, normally what we would do is on our mobile phone, this device would reboot after we put the credentials in there and a long range reader would connect to our mobile phone network and we'd be able to go to rfid.local and view the data as it's coming in. But what I did so we can see it a little better is I also connected my computer to the PHY exploit network on the mobile phone so we can view it here in the web browser. So let's do that now. So here is where the data is gonna come in. There's a couple other things in here, notifications, uh, reload. If you go under reset, you can erase data and clear notifications, uh, reset the device, etc. But what we care about in our test now is this page where the data is gonna come in from the cards that we read. So typically we did our recon, we know where people are going for lunch now maybe, we're going to follow them in or get there before them, et cetera. 
We're going to catch them as they're going through a door or walk next to them in line, do some social engineering, have a chat with them, have this reader in a bag close enough to where their badge is located on their body that you're going to catch some reads while you're having a conversation with them or while you walk next to them, etc., depending on your comfortability level and the environment that you're in. Right, it might be a fast paced environment where you just have to catch them as they're walking in a door or bump into them. Or it might be something where you can walk up, they're in a bookstore, you're like, hey, what's up with that book? You know, that looks pretty good. You're right up next to them and you're just grabbing reads. It really depends on the environment. But what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna grab my cell phone and I'm going to tape this card read and show you how that works. So here we have our prox reader and I'm gonna put this on here couple different times and now we are going to refresh this page and we got one of those two reads so it's a bit length of 26 it is a facility code of 42 and it's a card number of 16180 so what do we do with this data? This is the card data that we now need to write to a blank card. So in your practical exploit kit, you got some T5577 125 low frequency cards. And since this is a prox reader doing low frequency and the card we used was a prox2 card that's low frequency, that's what we're gonna write it to. So let's do that now. So what we're gonna do on the computer is clone a card. We're gonna use this blank one. We're just gonna set it on top of the prox mark for what we're doing. But first we'll show if we have this door reader and we use this blank card, it doesn't do anything. But with a real card from the user, we actually get an access granted and we get some data. So we wanna take this blank card, put it on our prox mark, and we'll continue from there. So let's open up our Proxmark software and we'll try to clone something and go through a couple options in here. So we're using a low frequency card. So we can look at the options for that in here. And we know ours was an HID Prox RFID card. So we can type in LF HID and that'll give us information on how to utilize the functionality for that. So we have a reader which will grab data off the card if we had a card. Uh, we don't have a card because what we did is used a long range reader to snag data off a card from one of our victims from that company. So what we need to use is clone and take the data that we found and put it onto this card and then use that to get into the facility. But I will show the reader functionality because it's useful if maybe you were going through somewhere and you got a hold of a badge. So if I say LF HID reader, let me resituate this card, it should come back with no data because it's blank. But if I took the card that we actually grabbed from the user and I put it on there, and we'll replay that command, we get a little bit of data back, right? We get that 42 facility code, the 16180 um, card number, it's H103016 bit. So that's the information that we would need. And I'm gonna put my other card back on here, uh, the blank one. And what we're going to do is go LFHID and again, the option was clone, so we'll type in clone and that'll give us information on that. Now it gives us some example commands here. What we need is we have a facility code, we have a card number, and we know it's this H10301 for the prox card. So what we're gonna do is use this command right here and change out the data. So we'll say LF HID clone minus W H10301 minus minus FC and then we're gonna put our facility code in there of what we grabbed. So that is gonna be 42. So we'll type 42 and we'll say, okay, our card number is gonna be, let's grab the card number, 16180, 16180. And I'm gonna hold this card on here, centered, and make sure we get the right on there. And preparing clone HID. Um, so now it says we can do LF HID reader again and read the data back off it. So let's make sure that we got data put onto this card. So we'll say LF HID reader. So now we're reading what was our blank card that we just wrote data to from our capture of the user. 
So let's see if there's actually data on this card now. And it looks like there is. Looks correct. Facility code 42161180. So now what we want to do is we want to test this on the door reader. So a minute ago, we showed that the real card worked on the door reader. Now what we're going to do is take the blank card and use it on the door reader, which is what we would do now that we're attacking that facility. So we went through that whole process, right? We, we did some recon. We found out where people went to lunch or where they go during breaks, et cetera. We utilized that data to then use our long range reader to capture that data. We took that data, we wrote it onto a card, and now we want to enter that facility. So here's what we're gonna do. Let me grab my cell phone so we can tape this here. So right here we have our reader again and we have our blank card and this time it should work, right? So now there's data on there, it says granted. So now we have access to that facility. Hopefully this was useful for you. This was your methodology from beginning to end, from finding your users to grabbing their badges, cloning their badges and gaining access to a facility. I haven't really seen people show that before, so I wanted to show that here. And people were asking me about the peak kit, so this is how to utilize those long range readers or skimmers, and then how to put the process together in a methodology. Next up, I'll show how to use a flipper in case you have one on hand while you're in the facility after you gained access, maybe to get access to further secured areas. So stay tuned for that. I'll put that out here in a few minutes probably. If you learned something or you liked the video, share it out with your friends on social media. I rely on everybody else to do my promotion. Thank you.